we're going to talk a little bit about the circulatory system. We talked about how in individual cells things get transported through the cell membrane, but how do we transport things around a multicellular organism? Well, in this case in humans we're going to use a circulatory system. It is our main transport system in order to move nutrients, gases, wastes, and other materials throughout the body. Our transport system is made up of three main things, the heart, the blood, and the blood vessels. The blood really can be divided into four main things. The plasma, which is the liquid portion, primarily made up of water. Red blood cells, which are used to transport oxygen. They transport oxygen primarily using a protein called hemoglobin. It actually attaches to the oxygen molecules in order to de deliver them around the body to the cells. It will also attach carbon dioxide to bring it back to the lungs to be released. Next are the white blood cells. White blood cells are used in what's called our immune response. The immune response helps to protect us from foreign invaders. The last one, platelets. Platelets are actually cell parts. They're not actually whole cells, and they're involved in clotting our blood when we have some sort of an injury. So let's move on to the clotting process. How do the platelets actually form a clot? Well, it's really a three-step process controlled by enzymes. So the first thing that happens is you have some sort of an injury and that's going to cause something called thromboplastin to get released. Once that's released, it causes something called prothrombin to turn into thrombin, which is an enzyme. In the third stage, that enzyme thrombin is used to convert fibrinogen into fibrin, which is really just this mesh or net layer that's there to help the platelets and red blood cells to stop from getting released any further, kind of catches them so that we don't lose any more. That's what really helps us to form our clot. So when we have our blood vessel here that has some sort of an injury, you can see that the red blood cells are the red parts. They can usually make it through that injury or hole. But what happens is, is these green little platelets will clump up together and send out signals to the body for this reaction to start. And once we have the fibrin net formed, it forms this sort of mesh to trap things in so that they can't get lost any further. Well, we know how the clot is formed and we know that there are things inside of our body in order to transport around. Well, what are they? They're called blood vessels and we have three main kinds, which I'm sure you've heard of them before, but maybe don't necessarily know their jobs. They're arteries, veins, and capillaries. Our arteries carry blood away from the heart. I usually try to remember that the A away, an artery. They carry blood away from the heart. They have very thick walls. They're very muscular because there's a lot of pressure in the blood leaving the heart in order to allow that blood to get all the way around the body. Most of the arteries have high oxygen content except for one artery, and that's the pulmonary artery. It's taking blood away from the heart leading to the lungs to pick up oxygen. That's what that pulmonary refers to. In terms of our veins, our veins do the opposite. They carry blood towards the heart. They have very thin walls. The blood pressure is much lower in the veins than it is in the arteries because it has already traveled through the body and through the capillaries. So in order to help the blood to get back towards the heart, the veins have valves. So I usually try to remember the V in valves with veins to prevent the blood from flowing backwards. If you can imagine, as you walk around and you move, you have muscles that squeeze around the blood vessels. And as they squeeze, it's almost like a tube of toothpaste. They help to squeeze the blood through the blood vessels, through the veins, and the valves will stop the blood from going back away from the heart and going in the opposite direction. They allow for one-way flow. Typically, the blood inside of a vein has low oxygenated oxygen levels, except for one blood vessel, the pulmonary vein. Remember, that's going towards the heart, and we said before pulmonary means lungs. So if it's coming from the lungs, it just picked up a lot of oxygen. The last type of blood vessel are our capillaries. Capillaries are very small vessels. They're only one cell layer thick, so they're very thin, thin walled. And what that helps to do is diffusion. Since it's only one cell layer thick, things can actually squeeze in between the cells in order to diffuse. So things like gases, nutrients, and wastes can pass in between capillaries. This cannot happen in arteries and veins. They're too thick walled. 
The capillaries help to connect the arteries and veins together, and this is where all of our exchange of nutrients occurs. Sometimes we call them capillary beds because it's a whole network of capillaries. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to draw each of these types of blood vessels. I've labeled one for you, the vein. I'd like you to look at the other two blood vessels and see if you can figure out which ones they are. So pause, draw these, and try to figure out which ones they are. Let's see if you were right. For the first one, if you picked capillary, you did a great job. Notice it's very small and very thin. Remember, it's only one cell layer thick. This one was labeled oxygen rich, whereas the vein was labeled oxygen poor with valves. This one is our artery in the middle here, the oxygen rich one. Also notice that it is very thick wall. To remember the arteries are highly muscular, very thick because they have a lot of pressure. There are some main things that I'd like you to consider when you think about blood getting pumped around the body. There are three main players, the heart, the lungs, and the body. The heart is used to pump blood to the lungs in order to pick up oxygen, and then around the body to deliver the oxygen. The lungs is where the oxygen diffuses into the blood and carbon dioxide out of the blood. So this is where our exchange occurs of our gases. And the body is going to receive the oxygen through the blood, and it's also going to drop off and deliver carbon dioxide. So if you look at this little diagram we've drawn over here, if you think about starting in the heart, if the blood comes from the body, it's very low in oxygen, it's oxygen poor. Where does it need to go in order to get it? It needs to be pumped to the lungs. Once it goes in the lungs, it's gonna drop off the carbon dioxide and pick up oxygen. Well, that oxygen needs to get delivered somehow. It's gonna head back to the heart and it's gonna pump that oxygenated blood around the body and eventually it's gonna go back to the heart again in order to start the cycle all over. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to practice and try to see if you can remember the cycle of blood flow throughout the body.